please introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon. I am Kathleen Coppola. I'm commissioner from representing District 4 at the Charlotte County Airport Authority. And I have been there almost uh, 28 years, been re-elected uh, all this time. And I represent, again, District 4 in the community. So tell us about how this, all these changes came about. We had a um, proposal presented to us to allow investors to take over the Charlotte County Airport. Um, they wanted to take our 139 certificate, which is how we operate the airport from FAA officials, and they had certain rules and regulations in their contract after taking over the airport that I did not approve of from the very beginning one of which was a proposal that our employees were only guaranteed two years employment and then they could do whatever with them. And the other thing was, the big thing was the 139 certificate, which is how you run an airport. We would have no say as a commissioner, your elected people, you elect us to run the airport, the good people of Charlotte County, we would have absolutely no say in how this airport would be operated from then on because we would have lost our 139 certificate and had to give it over to these, this as yet unknown investment group. So how would that, what would that change look like if it went through? Anybody's guess. It's anybody's guess. Right now we run uh, an airport, we have a Legionnaire lines that comes in and out to over 47 cities. There's one now. <laughs> and we are very successful with this airline. We have a number of businesses that have been there. For Pulsifida, for instance, over 45 years, Pulsifida has been with us on the airport. We have a number of businesses. Um, UPS is there, or um, American Express is there. And that's how we make our profit, through the airline, through the passengers that come through, and through the businesses that we rent spaces to. So, so we're doing very well. We're successful. And the other side talks about maximizing those profits. They would set up, we've heard things about hotels at the airport, retail space, et cetera. Um, who would... Parking who, garages. Parking garages. They wanted to. They talked about parking garages and hotels, putting them up on the um, different areas. But the parking garage seemed to have been the big thing that they were looking at several stories high parking garage uh, with some of their proposals but mostly um, we would have no say we would have no say in the contracts that came through uh, and we would be just sitting there for what for what reason no reason so right now all the profits correct me if I'm wrong but all the profits that are made within the airport boundaries must stay within the airport. Yes, that's an FAA rule and regulation. Any profit has to be reinvested back into the airport, which we have done. And if anybody's been out there lately, they'll notice we're redoing our, our runways, uh, we're redoing our hangar tenants, um, we're doing building on the north end, and we also are bringing in college uh, kids to have an aviation course. We're providing space for them now to learn aviation mechanics, which is uh, beneficial to uh, the area students here also for a, a promising career. And under the proposed changes by the so-called investors, the profits would be able to be taken out of the airport. Yes. And they could take them anywhere they wanted. They could take them anywhere they wanted, exactly. They could, uh, and we would have no say. Because they say they would reinvest in Charlotte County, but that's... Uh, not a guarantee. That wasn't in the proposal. The, the money that was made, if they took over, could be used however they saw fit. Talk about State Representative Michael Grant's interest in this. Well, Michael Grant, um, who again was once on our Airport Authority Board, uh, is proposing legislation to change the entire way that the Charlotte County Airport is operated and it would be for the benefit of a few, not for the benefit of the people of Charlotte County. This is my opinion, this is what I've studied, 
and I firmly believe there is no benefit here for the people that live here in Charlotte County, the voters of Charlotte County, and it's just for a select few people. So why do you think Representative, State Representative Grant seemed to come out of nowhere pushing this uh, agenda? I don't really know why he's uh, interested in this. Um, I would think someone representing the community of Charlotte County and the airport, which is one of the biggest economic drivers in Charlotte County, would be behind the current operation of the airport. And I just don't understand. And when the vote came, to do this proposal that Michael Grant wanted, there was a three to two against it in the original vote. I voted against it from day one, because I, I didn't like the proposal at all. And it's not that I didn't know about the proposal, because I sat with this um, Mr. Vasey for a number of hours. Mr. Vasey's the consultant the, Mr. brought Vasey, on the by the Mr. the consultant board. on this proposal. And I sat with him a number of hours, six, seven hours, going over piece by piece by piece. And I did not, I brought up my objections, I did not have a good feeling about it. And to me, it wasn't something that would benefit the airport nor the people in Charlotte County. So I voted no the first time. It came back again. I voted no a second time. And also I was joined with two other commissioners who also voted no. And then when it came back again, it was a four to one vote against doing this proposal. And now the only person that was for it was our newest representative commissioner, Vanessa Oliver, who happens to be the daughter of Michael Grant. So. Talk about how the Punta Gorda leadership of the city of Punta Gorda came into this with the letter. Well, unbeknownst to uh, me, or from what I understand, other Charlotte uh, Airport Authority people, Mr. Vasey went to the Punta Gorda City Council on his own to discuss this matter and to uh, urge them to support it and maybe go along with it. And who were those people? The mayor? The mayor, and then it went through to the City Council, too. He, I'm a, we had meetings over there with them to have this done and to take over the airport. And uh, apparently there was uh, some talk of there would be a lot of money involved and it would benefit them, or uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. But um, we didn't find out about this until later on and we went in front of the, the Punta Gorda Council. I was there. Pam was there. Um, Who's Pam? Pam C. was the uh, commissioner on her very last day before she retired, did the entire proposal of this to us, urging us to support it and vote for us. This was her very last day on the dais. She had retired after that. Um, so, the Puerto a City Council at first was all for this. They would then take over the airport and then they would probably do whatever they needed to do to help this investor group get established at the airport. This is just my summation. But we went in front of the city council and said this is not a good thing to do and please do not support it. And thankfully they did not support it and they turned it down also. And we thank them for that, 100%. At next Tuesday's legislative meeting, Michael Grant has, State Representative Michael Grant has brought up the idea of changing how commissioners are voted onto the airport authority. What can you tell us about that? When I heard this and read this, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked at the usurpation of the voter privilege to vote for your local officials to be on the airport authority. I couldn't understand how someone who is voted by the people of Charlotte County, 
how somebody could propose something like this to take away the ability for local people to vote for their representation. It's just, to me, was un-American, completely un-American. Is the airport authority doing anything about this? Uh, yes, we are. Um, just a little background. He was, uh, Senator, uh, Representative Grant was proposing this, and when he took it over to the Senate, from what we understand, they were told, you have to go back into your community. You have to get your community's understanding of this, and they're okay before you can propose it to the Senate part of the legislation in Tallahassee. So he's decided he's going to do a Zoom, what is known as a Zoom meeting, which is uh, something we can all join in on. He's going to make a presentation. We can ask him questions. We can tell him what we think. We can tell him if we're for it or if we're against it. And we can get his motivation for this, hopefully his true motivation for doing this. Why would you take the voting ability away from people in these United States where this is how we work? We don't, we don't go out and say, all right, I want you, I want you, I want you. We vote for the person we want. So this is the Zoom meeting. Is his way of now being able to bring it or not bring it to the Senate for a vote. Is that what your emer the board's emergency meeting is about? Yes. There will be an emergency meeting on Monday, and the board will get together, and um, there will be an agenda, and we're going to make a final decision on what we're going to do. So I hope everybody knows about this Zoom meeting, and if you're a supporter of the airport the way it is, I hope you join in. And I hope you make your voices heard, because there'll be an awful lot of voices, I'm sure, that day, both for and against it. But we are, um, most of the communications I have had from people have applauded my decision not to go along with this and to keep the airport as it is now because it is successful. Why, why mess with success? Thank you for joining us. Kathleen Coppola. Well, thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Who do you think is behind all these changes? Well, we have never been given any names of investors who would be interested in this. That was never uh, brought forth. Uh, we stopped the uh, negotiations and the first two steps because it just was would not be advantageous to the airport to even go any further, and that's my opinion, and that's how I voted. I'm there, elected by the people of Charlotte County, and have been for many, many terms, to make sure that airport is run properly, and it's run for the people of Charlotte County, and it's run, right now, it is run that way, and we hope to keep it that way. A group of unknown investors coming in who don't know what their motivation is, uh, and being able to take our, again, our 139 certificate and uh, have their way uh, with hiring and firing our employees just was not something I was willing to do. And I remain that way today. Talk about the growth of the airport over the last decade. Well, Allegiant Airlines came upon uh, Punagota Airport and we had discussions with them um, on starting their uh, service from our airport to different parts of Florida and also different parts of the United States. We started off with a couple of cities and the growth, the people that wanted to use this airline was so startling. We were doing so well that Allegiant kept adding city after city after city. They're a low cost airline. Uh, there's no frills attached. You get in this plane, it's comfortable. They take you, uh, it's nonstop, take you to your destination, and the fee and price is terrific for people. It's affordable. We have grandma and grandpa visiting the kids. We have the kids coming to visit grandma from college. Uh, we have business people that use it. I've been on it several times. Um, How many cities did they fly to now? They fly now to 47 cities. 47. It's 47. They've just added a few. I'm going to get new cards with the new cities that are added on. But um, 
they are our chief and and only airline right now. They're doing phenomenal, um, and we just get along great with them. And the community loves them. If the community didn't support them, they wouldn't be here. But the community has been 100% behind it. When I go out into the supermarkets or the stores and I have my fly PGD, I get approached so many times from people that say, thank you. Thank you for that airline. Talk about the growth of the airport with Allegiant. Well, through the years, uh, we have built the airline passenger count over, up and up and up. It's been going up and up to over a million passengers a year. A million passengers a year is an economic boom for Charlotte County. The people come here, they see the beautiful waterfront that we have, the beautiful property we have at reasonable costs. Uh, they go to our malls, they go to our local shops, they go to our restaurants. Um, and there is every opportunity for them to look around and a lot of times they actually buy property here for either retirement in the future or to actually relocate from where they are in the cold northwest or northeast. And we have been just inundated with people and inquiries. And our, our business atmosphere here has gone uh, great guns for these people, How long for our local people. How long has the Legion been here? Legion's been here about seven, eight years, ten years. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly, but they've been here about that amount of time. How Starting off with two airplanes, and now we have a fleet. And they're even getting uh, a few more than that coming in. Because our runways now are being lengthened to accommodate even more flights in and out. And how much interaction does the board have with uh, management of Allegiant? Uh, usually that's held with our leader, uh, our CEO. He's usually the gentleman that deals with that. If we have a concern or if we have a question, uh, we usually go to James Parrish, who is our CEO, and he takes it up with the proper authorities and then comes back and reports to us as uh, commissioners. Have you had any word from, we've been told Allegiant uh, was against these changes, have you? Allegiant was asked in this proposition if every board member had approved of it and Allegiant approved of it, it would have been a done deal. If any of us did not approve of it and Allegiant uh, approved of it, it still would not have been a done deal. Allegiant had to approve of it, the five commissioners had to approve of it, and that's how the deal would have been done. However, when Allegiant was asked the first time for an opinion after reading the proposal, they said no. The second time they were asked again, when it went back to a vote, they said no. So it came to our board three times for a vote. First time I said no, the second time two other people said no, and again, like I said, the third time four of us were against it, and Allegiant also was against it. So it was a uh, done deal at that point, and it was not going to go through. So that's a pretty clear indication that Allegiant's pretty happy with the current structure at the airport. I would say that's absolutely true, yes. They make a lot um, of money. At they're this making airport. money, they've got a clientele, they've got a retirement population that loves to go to different places. Um, plus, they have a younger family group that can afford it because of the prices that they charge that they can also go and fly and go back and see mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or go to graduations or whatever. It's, it's just a wonderful airline. It really is. Their prices are good. Their service is good. They go to many, many cities that are popular with people. And um, they're just good people. Interesting, the day that we were uh, doing our board meeting about this, the whole room was ringed with people, one of which was our representative Michael Grant. And uh, when the vote came 
and it was a three to two against doing this proposal. There was, uh, I don't know what the word is, but there was a sudden groan throughout the group. 